Благословен Бог нас завжди нині по все час і на віки віків. Ukraine's struggle takes a daily toll. Katerina Skopic saw her husband off to war. He'd been called up. After just two months at the front, he was killed by a Russian shell. His family and friends remember the brightest of spirits. Він дуже добрий, дуже добра людина. Ну, насправді, такий друг, він завжди прийде на допомогу, завжди. Він, це перевірено. Дуже світлий чоловік, дуже світлий чоловік. This family's tragedy speaks to the nations. Faced with an invader who will not stop, they have no choice but to keep paying this price, even as many Ukrainians flee the country or bribe people to avoid its search for more soldiers to replenish the ranks. Um, that's about fear, that's about death, that's about funerals, and that's actually about the trust to the state and to the, and to the president, by the way. I think sometimes we are trying to avoid these questions, and that's, that's why this, uh, this issue started to be very sensitive. In Kyiv's Maidan, the war dead are recorded with flags. Ukraine has lost tens of thousands, and the army must replace them in a nation that's grown wearily familiar with death and Russian attacks. This story of loss, continuing loss, and constant threat from Russia has now produced a very sensitive national debate, which is the question about a new mobilization, the army's need for hundreds of thousands of new troops, and the questions that poses for who is still willing to fight for Ukraine. The first thorny issue is demobilization. Recent protests, including here at Maidan, by wives and mothers of soldiers, are demanding their return home. So far, the scale of this is small, but there have been protests in many Ukrainian towns, and there's public sympathy for those who sent their loved ones to war and currently have no idea when they'll come home. Uh, he has been serving for almost two years, and according to the current law, uh, they have to uh, keep fighting till the end of the war. But as we see, two years uh, passed and the war is not going to the end at all. And we all understand that it will be a very long war. Uh, our soldiers who are fighting for two years, they um, deserve the time to uh, to be replaced by another one. And also one of my goals also is um, to win in this game. And we cannot win with uh, harmed and uh, tired and exhausted soldiers. And then there's the issue of draft evasion. Recent social media posts highlight angry public reactions to the army checking people's papers. This and the demobilization issue are being amplified by Russian social media bots. That hurts a lot because now people being more emotional and more angry about this and uh, Russian side uh, definitely, definitely uses this uh, for their benefit and I think uh, that this pressure will gonna grow. While many brigades are still advertising for volunteers, the army will struggle to get the 500,000 new soldiers it's asked for. It's one of the issues dividing President Zelensky and his top general, because volunteering is down and the government doesn't want to call up so many Ukrainians. You know, I have a son, he's 17 years old and he will turn 18 in a couple of months in April. He's taking the military classes, shooting, and when when we had lunch just two days, two days ago, um, we, we talked about it. And I understand that he and his uh, uh, mates in the university, they all realized that uh, they may also have to, to go and fight. 
because this is their country and this is the country that they that they have feel they have to defend so in the end uh, generals always want numbers which uh, uh, impress people but the most important element is different the most important element is that as long as the people of ukraine believe that this country has to be defended we will keep fighting this is Kiev's Mohyla University. So far, people under 27 haven't been conscripted. The new mobilization law would lower the age by a couple of years, mandate military training for students, and punish the more than 700,000 Ukrainian men who remain abroad. And the students we spoke to are just fine with that. My position is really strict. Uh, I wouldn't say that uh, I hate those people because, well, you know, like we don't hate people yet. Mm. We, uh, it's my attitude, my personal position. But um, they chose their own path, and I would say that it's indeed it's illicit. Five or ten years ago, you could uh, avoid the army, and because we are so post-Soviet country, it was okay because a little bit of corruption, a little bit of stuff like that. So it wasn't as frowned upon. But right now, because the trouble is literally knocking on your door, and if you don't do something about it, you will meet the consequences, people are treating it uh, as a much serious matter. It's people who live right here, who need to go through the mass missile attacks, who need to go through all those war, really horrible things. Uh, we have common ground, we understand each other. It's like if, if you do not even know each other, if you just met at the shelter, you still have this, some, you have something in common. The last big issue is the way the draft is run. Places like this, the military commission in Borispol, the suburb of Kiev, are a relic of the Soviet era. Ah, what? The process of running the call-up is largely paper-based, and the summons to military service is meant to be served in person. So this whole process is really steeped in officialdom, a kind of old-fashioned Soviet officialdom. This draft office goes back to those times, and a lot of Ukrainians are quite uncomfortable with that. It didn't matter in the days immediately after the February 2022 Russian invasion because there was a huge wave of national enthusiasm for signing up and volunteering. But now that that enthusiasm has ebbed a bit, the government has a real challenge on its hands in keeping the momentum of conscription and mobilization going. Many of those we saw here were seeking exemption. Alexander has been spared service so far because he has three kids, but worries that the new law could change that. Attempts to pass the new law have met with several delays. So could Ukraine be sure, I asked one of the MPs working on it, of having enough troops for the coming campaign? I would say no one is confident. Okay, so they, got, they, will got, they will get, actually, uh, the instruments. But again, Ukrainians are not Russians, and um, Ukrainians need respect and being valued. Then in this case, they will act differently. Um, I, think, I think that's this rule and, or this part of law that it has to be uh, teached by uh, government, by office of president, by parliamentarians. Because, um, and one thing I want to underline, that it's not about not willingness to, to serve in army or to be afraid. Yaroslava's husband has only had a few days leave since the war started. His daughter Margarita is growing up. When might the army release him? Even if the new law goes through, Yaroslava doesn't think it'll be any time soon. And actually they stated that you need to serve 36 months without any interruptions. Uh, and then you will have a right to sign um, this application for release. And during the months, it will be like uh, your application will be processed during the months. But uh, Stavka Holovnokomandovica 
um, the higher uh, yeah, command, the yeah. higher, very higher command, including Zelensky, uh, Zaluzhny, uh, they can um, prolong these uh, timelines. So they, they can say, oh, we have very bad situation on the front line. We can release you in a year only. The political differences over that new law stem from a conviction that when it comes to fighting, Ukrainians would rather be inspired than coerced. But after two years of war, that inspiration is not what it once was.